Welcome back. I hope we're all clearly and audible to hear. I assume so, actually, because there are bars moving hello, on my hello. screen and uh, people should yes, be audible. So unless we're, you just see moving lips and don't hear anything, just please put in chat, hey, your sound is not working and we'll figure it out right away. But we should be clear and everything. For example, Izzy is already back again. And Izzy, thank you very much for the sub that we have, that you got us. Um, thank you, Izzy. Thank you. You're over the mushroom. Yeah, you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But we're also here today to, um, well, play some uh, play some D and D, and also Mango Ray in chat. Hello there, Mango Ray. And I'm assuming that Hello. we just can be audible. Otherwise, people would have already given us feedback. Um, sure. We're today back for the next chapter in the story, the fifth session of this campaign already we have uh three of our players here today who since two weeks ago had a chance to level up their characters and um also think about what their characters can do in between adventures only for us to launch them today into a new adventure um and what it will be we will find out shortly but before we get in there how is everyone doing today hunky dory uh at least where i am the, the holiday christmas season is really kicking off got the tree today baking cookies it's hella cold but i'm going to warm up <laughs> and uh if you roll well tonight i will stay nice and warm today so please roll well <laughs> <laughs> There. Perfect. I'm, I'm all right. I've been working all day and kind of still I'm a little bit on, in, in that mood of like my, my head is still thinking of things and thinking how to fix things and thinking how to approach the new project and, you know, but it'll be okay. I'll, I'll get into the game and uh, I'll have Rebus's brain instead of my, my own. So that'll be great. Um, huh? See? great way to disconnect so i'm excited about it <laughs> cool i'm i i'm kind of excited and tired and a lot of things <laughs> uh, then we're gonna make so. sure that we gonna make sure that we get you get you awake again with today's events in the adventure how are you gm uh, yeah, i how am are you? i am feeling i am feeling pretty fine. It's the Christmas season. I'm always good during Christmas season. I am a sucker for Christmas. If you need someone to watch cheap Christmas movies with and to drink mulled wine and stuff, just give me a call. I am totally, I live Hilarious. for that stuff. And uh, I'm also looking forward now to start today's session because I have some plans and I know I have some fantastic players who like to see how these plans will develop. So we're going to get to that, but before we get into that, just our usual pre-game disclaimers and informations. Um, we're playing here on uh, Horde of Tales, and today we are playing, again, an adventure in the Convergence Manifesto adventure series. We finished the previous adventure last time, and today we're going to start the second adventure in the series called Live Another Day. And it is written by the Across Eberron Project. If you're interested in the adventures yourself, check out acrosseberron.com. You can find all information about the games there. That means we don't die. Break the system! Well. <laughs> 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 Who knows? The last words. The, um, yeah. the last time the... was was close. <laughs> that was, that was close. Last that was time close. we did fine. Well, I did fine. You did, you know. <laughs> you could have we done did. better when when we did, <laughs> we I did fine. Changed. <laughs> exactly. 
Oh, well, you didn't die. The 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 over the overlay you see here is made by our very own Caro. Um, and any kind of music you might hear in between is from Dark Fantasy Studios. Uh, and we also, in case you see any kind of special art that might pop up on today's stream, that is a cooperation between Caro and Serial Snowings right here. So um, we did a mashup, we did a fusion, and now you exactly. get to see it. You became Saro or Cariel or something like that. I don't Cariel know. Cariel sounds is. great. Yeah, Cariel. <laughs> <laughs> Talking, talking about art and interesting things, today we can show our opening, our intro video. We've, we've replaced the placeholder and um, uh, Caro used her magic to put together a little video. So how about we take a look at that before we get into the session? That approval. was fantastic, <laughs> super cool. Look at those lovely characters, hear that cool music. I'm really pumped for this now. So how about I get us right into the game? Uh, yes, uh, Ida. I would like oh, to I forgot remind something, I our, maybe, maybe it's the same thing I'm going to mention, but I would like to remind our wonderful uh, audience that um, our GM has this very wonderful cat who is not shy at all and sometimes likes to creep in front of gm's camera now dear audience if you see this beautifully fuzzy a bit floppy orange cat grace the camera of the gm this is the trigger if you have enough chat points you can re you can redeem them for something called cat vantage cat vantage will give the next person of your choosing player or gm advantage on your role so the trigger is seeing a beautiful tabby cat on the GM's window and cashing in set points. Make chaos, make ripples in the stream and uh, join us there. To point out what kind of impact the cat vantage can have, we did already have one session where it helped in a nice, very dramatic um, bar brawling fight, which was completely sanctioned, kind of like a WWE scenario in which Dithun did shine yes. thanks to the powers of cat vantage. Meow. But <laughs> with uh, with with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, we we move away from the topic of cats, and we're going to get back into the city of Sharn. God. I'll just Where... ignore that that happened. <laughs> I'm it's... looking forward. I'm looking forward to the clip of that. Um, we're. <laughs> We are in the city of Sharn, where last we found our members of the Clifftop Adventurers Guild completing their first job in retrieving an object for guild handler Lara. All of you were properly played, uh, paid for the job and have since then enjoyed a few weeks of free time three weeks to be exact you might have had some doings and dealings with each other in this time maybe some of you decided to spend their time alone working on their own projects but it has been three weeks since your last job and you have only recently received your letters from guild handler Lara calling you for a new job she has lined up for your party. Now, before we meet our protagonists again at the briefing for their new job, is there anything of note that any of you have done in these three weeks 
Anything you would like to share before we move over to current events? Let's start with Rebus. I have a question for the DM. Yes. How far away is Sean from uh, Rebus's closest known person, AKA Moira? I'd say by foot, if, if they would make the journey by foot, they would, it would take about a week's travel to get there. Um, but they could also see if they could hire any kind of means of transportation, be it mounds or actual That's vehicles true. that could get them there. They do have money now to pay for that. Exactly. Um, so would it be possible for Rebus to have gone back and visit Mora in this time? Absolutely. That would have been possible. Okay, then let's do that. All right. Uh, I don't know if you want to role play it or if you want to just tell me what happened. What would, well, I mean, I'm assuming we could spend an entire session on getting into the details of that visit. But what would you say is the most interesting thing that Rebus experienced or did during their visit to Aunt Moira? Oh, of, like without hesitation. Apart from giving her a rundown of the forge uh, that they visited and how the equipment was working there and uh, giving her the contacts of uh, Tresca in case they can have a collaboration and talking a little bit about the Warforged. Mm -hmm. Rebus will tell Moira, who for anyone who might not have caught it on the other episodes is essentially the person the the engineer who put rebus back together as you can see rebus has some like mix and match pieces uh they weren't made that way but moira reconstructed them um and rebus would like to tell her about lord merricks and what that might mean why was he so interested and if maybe that has to do with some kind of connection to house kenneth or, you know, a different house that might have ordered um, a particular Warforged uh, model from House Kenneth. So Rebus will tell Moira about the visions that they had, essentially, because they are concerned about it. I, yeah, I don't think they have told anyone else in the party. Like, they've obviously talked with Lord Merricks in front of the other members of the party, but I don't think they mm -hmm. have mentioned having this kind of strange flashback that they can't really fully understand. So, yeah. Gotcha. Well, Almira is very fascinated by your stories about the flashback and the visions that you experienced. And she's already drafting up theories and uh, hypotheses on how that is possible, uh, especially considering your essential missing part that she also found out is missing in you. Um, if you would allow her, she would do like kind of a basic maintenance on you to like see if there's any kind of, to put it very bluntly, faulty wiring that might have caused that or any kind of yeah. other minor damages. Uh, but she does not find anything in that regard. In fact, she is pretty impressed with her own handiwork that you're so safely put together and that everything is still in place. Um, but that doesn't really Indeed. put her, it doesn't put her mind to rest that she can't find an explanation for that. What she can find an explanation for is your questions about House Kenneth and Lord Merricks. And she um, is not very, she is not very fond of House Kenneth, so to say. Um, she does understand that House Kenneth ha is one of, even amongst the uh, great houses of the Dragon Marked Houses, it has a fairly elevated position. It's played an essential role in the last war due to its creation forges they created, and mm -hmm. the creation forges being these massive, intricate, magical, technological forges allowed them to create the first war forge. But one of the things that Moira makes clear she is rather frustrated about is that House Canis was not willing to share knowledge of that technology with other houses so they could maybe spread the technology 
and also distribute further development of the Warforged. Mm -hmm. um, she also says that towards the end of the war, it said that House Kenneth lost most of his creation forges, that the most in, one of the most important ones is actually in the so-called Mornlands, the region of the world that has been covered by this strange phenomenon that um, makes the region no longer accessible and um, was also the cause for the armistice and the peace treaty that was signed towards the end of the last war. Hmm. And for Lord Merrick, she thinks she likes to describe him as someone who likes to present himself as a philanthropist, um, but who she takes as someone that's probably smiles in your face while he's already preparing the dagger to step in your back. But you also would understand that there's a lot of, you think there's a lot of personal annoyances in there in what she tells you about him. I see, that's, that is actually quite interesting. Um, yeah, then this would be a good uh, occasion to let her know. Um, oh, and Moira, I must say the job you did, remember all of these different um, plates and mechanisms that we were working on together, especially the ones on the arms, which seem to get stuck all the time. They worked beautifully last time. I, I am not proud that I had to use them, but they came in handy when protecting my friends, and I am very grateful that you did a great job repairing me. And she looks at you and she looks at the places where there's indeed like this thin line in your frame that folds open. And she, she looks at it and she says, well, I'm glad to hear that all of that worked well and impressive. Whoever, if we ever find out who actually built you, I want to find that person and shake their hand so thoroughly and then force them to tell me how they build you. This is impressive. Oh, I will be more than welcome. I am so curious. And as soon as I know anything, you will be hearing from me either by letter or in person when I drag the engineer to your door. I'm already looking forward to you dragging someone through my front door. <laughs> and I guess, you know, they spent about a week together maybe she did some upgrades and some repairing on like some of the little things that didn't quite work out and then Rebus will make their way back to Sharrington to to their friends and yeah uh try to find them well and alive and see what the next job might be gotcha cool all right so that is how Rebus spends your time. How do the other members of our party spend their time? I saw that Delphine had maybe something to add here. So um, first of all, I gave on the commission for the shields. Indeed. I think it yes. will be finished in the three weeks. Gotcha. That would be correct. Um, um, how much would I need to pay on top of this? So. Since you already provided the shield, that's already quite some impressive material that you provided. And mm -hmm. Tresca would point out to you that the material that was used to make this, the shield is impressive craftsmanship. And she found it interesting to work on the shield and um, repurpose it to a form that is more befitting of your fighting style. With that being said, with the manpower involved in it, getting used to the forging procedures, and also just making sure that the end product lived up to Tresca's standards uh, and also to Stokes' standards, who is also involved in the creation of it. Um, Tresca would tell you she would ask for about 40 gold pieces for that commission. Okay. I give her an additional five on top of this. Gotcha. Very well. Which would yield you a significantly smaller and slender shield than the one that you gave her. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's not your typical board, basically, that like a, a, a knight would hold in front of them. That would not 
fit Delphine's fighting style with the rapier and the quick movements. It's more a, it's a smaller shield that is more like covering your underarm, like, or your lower arm, uh, that can be easily strapped to your lower arm, still allow for some mobility uh, with it. Um, and you can, should you need it to deflect a blow, uh, Tresca and Stoke build in a little mechanic that if you make a fist in it, the shield pops open to cover a bit more ground and allow you to block any kind of incoming damage. Mechanically speaking, it just acts as a regular shield while you have it equipped, but flavor-wise, you basically can have it like in a more folded up version around your lower arm to not impede your movements, but can still use it as a shield where necessary. Perfect. And it still retains the the gold color that was that the original shield also had. I, I think I'm correct. It had a gold color, right, Rain? The actual shield would be like this gold color, and it still has the same in that. And there's actually on the inside of the shield, if you look closely, uh, Tresca has put her own maker's mark in there, which is a little T, but the T is shaped like a hammer. So uh, that's her little that's her little maker's mark. Cool. <laughs> and. Um... Since there's a lot of time to spend and like yeah, not much to do uh, for one of the days, I will take rain on like a sightseeing tour through the, the town. Any any That's particular precious. places you go you go you go sightseeing? I mean, um, on at some point we've got this um, very interesting flyer. <laughs> Um, which which warns about in, <laughs> in game, you would actually also be able at certain spots in Sharn, especially the higher uh, stratas of the city, there is something like tourist information places mm -hmm. where you can also get flyers and briefings on tours. If you wanted to, you could actually take a guided tour through the city, um, or you can just make your own way through the city with these tours. Nah, we are not that kind of tourist who needs guide, guiding tours. We, we are just doing our own guiding. <laughs> so, you just um, go pop crow. Shine pop crow. I mean, for one, one night, probably, yes. <laughs> As well. Great. Um, but, um, like going through the like uh, most entertaining places um uh probably some of the the things that normal tourists should avoid mm. as well yeah the tourist traps yeah the tourist traps so like just out of fun and i think i i would spend quite a lot of money on this and uh how much would you say would it be you want to have like a nice evening out with uh, with Ray? Definitely. If you're also considering if you want to do some sightseeing and go some places, make sure that you also treat yourself to a good restaurant and with all the luxuries, I'd say for that day of extravaganza in Sharn, you be about 13 gold pieces. Okay. Um, plus, I think around two or three because needed to get my clothes fixed. Yeah. Yeah. About uh, that would be they... like three gold pieces for the. Okay. The and, uh, that's 16. And with, so... with, with, yeah. with three gold pieces, you actually bring it to the good tailors who also okay. really know how to stitch it back up, make a few adjustments, and it, it almost looks at, as new again afterwards. Okay. Um, this is probably the most I would like to do beside of like checking if I got any, any news from my enclave or anything to do. You've been considering your situation, Delphine, you would be awaiting any kind of instructions or, uh, orders that come from the higher members of the house. And House Lerander's most prominent place in Sharn is the Lerander Tower in the city, which is in the upper levels. And it's not just the enclave of House Lerander, but it's also the airship docking station in, uh, in Sharn. So throughout the weeks, if you go and see if there's anything waiting for you, 
next to meeting members of your house and having some nice, some less nice conversations with other house members, depending on how they view you and your past, you also see the majestic airships of House Lorenda that embark and arrive. Um, these floating, elegantly shaped ships that are encircled by a ring of elemental energy as they arrive in at the tower. And then as they dock with the tower, you see the energy dissipating and, van and vanishing. But as soon as they start up again, this ring starts forming again around the massive ship as it starts sailing away on invisible currents in the air again. And you even feel when you when you are this high in the city and you witness this majesty of sailing, no matter if it's sailing on the sea or sailing in the air, it feels as if your dragon mark gets a bit warmer in a comforting way. Not an un no uncomfortable way, but a very comforting way, as if the very mark on your skin enjoys this place. But for now, what you do get from House Loranda and from the higher matriarchs and patriarchs of the house who think that due to your past actions, you should be grateful that they did not dishonor you in any further way. Um, they do not require your services of now, but they look forward to your future visits for any further future services. Of course. <laughs> But well, then this is this for the three weeks, basically. All right. All right. Rain, we already know that you and Delphine have at least one great night out on town. And uh, that's one night. But is there anything else, Rain, that you would like to do in your spare time? Um, Rain would have found the modifications made to the shield she gave to Delphine a riot. She would have had like an uncharacteristic belly laugh and would have explained that back home in Triton society, there are such sticklers for perfection, uniformity, tradition. To see that shield completely redesigned, original, and made for, made to work for a single purpose, single person, rather than a bigger goal, would piss off so many Tritons, and Rain loves it. <laughs> And would uh, repeatedly insist, I guess I can assume the answer, do you want the great sword? I'm sure you can do wonders with it. Oh, honey, you should take the great sword. What a rebel. I love it. I see her face, so I know the answer in the past was no, so we'll just keep it to there. Um, Rain would have enjoyed the date, the, 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 the day out, love very lovingly. But uh, perhaps along the way, if there was a shop that sold uh, uh, these uh vibrant red liquids that could heal rain would be interested in buying like two regular ones depending on the price finding regular potions uh is no problem in charn um it's uh the the, the most basic forms of healing potions i i wouldn't say that they are as common as finding like ibuprofen in our worlds mm -hmm. in a in a supermarket <laughs> Um, but it's, if you go to the right places, you can find however many you need. Um, and I'm just trying to recall what's like the base price for a regular human. Five. I'd say I you could, you could get them. You tell me. I think the regular healing potion is normally 50, around 40 to 50, depending on, on the setting. Actually, double checking right now. Let's oh. say you can find them in a shop. You find in one of the middle districts, you yeah. come into this apothecary store, um, which uh, is run by this, um, this very loud talking female dwarf um, who's just really, she just really raises her voice a lot. And it's not because she's aggressive or anything, but she just talks loud. She just has a very loud voice. Um, she, um, she would offer you these healing potions in these nice cubicle vials for 35 gold pieces. I'd like to, so that's, I'll knock off 70. 70, yeah, that's, 
she also tries to get you in on a um, to get you a um, a customer stamp card that if for every 50 gold pieces you spend at her store, you get a stamp. And when you get 10 stamps, you get 10 gold pieces of store credit. Now, um, over these three weeks, Rain has been kind of like thinking about the implications of her given magics, what an unusual mix it is and really finally coming to terms with people blunt enough to tell her like, hey, that's not so much fun. But she's like, no one's ever actually told me that. How does hmm. this? So if as, as she's receiving this card, the, the offer to receive this customer card, Rain thinks this is an opportune time to maybe practice some of the things she's been contemplating about. So using subtle magic, I'd like to cast detect thoughts. Detect thoughts. Yes. So... Um, this person, I'm like, and I want to skim off what are the, um, what are what, what are the kind of thoughts emerging in this person's head, thinking wise? Uh, give me the card. Are they thinking scam sucker? Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are they thinking quotas? And, and you're doing this with subtle spells, so they wouldn't yes. notice that you're casting this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually, mm -hmm. surface thought as a creature. No. So as you do that, while she's offering you this stamp card you get the most surface thoughts and her inner voice is just as loud as her outer <laughs> voice and she yes. um but the most surface thought is that she's thinking about a dwarf two dwarf childs children two dwarf, dwarf children and you you get a feeling of of longing for them looking forward to seeing them it's not even this interaction with you is not on the forefront mm -hmm. of her thoughts that's some you get the impression that it is something that she's doing more passively this thought of these two dwarf children and her longing for them that's what's on the surface of her thoughts already Rain, although presents herself as someone who like left her home and her lands for something more exciting, like it was her choice. She's very much literally a fish out of water, so she'll go for the card. <laughs> and the dwarf, uh, the dwarf lady, say, "Thank you very much. Which name can I put on the card?" Rain. Rain. That's nice. And she puts it on the card. And then she, she puts a stamp on it and she hands you this little piece of parchment. I love her. Yes. Thank much... you for your purchase. Yes, much success and greetings to your little ones as I leave the, uh, uh, the, the store. And she just, she just quiet and you leave out of the store. There's some bells wrinkling as you close the door behind you. And she doesn't comment on that further. Uh, acquired your two potions and your loyalty card for, <laughs> um, by the way, this is Brenna's Apothecary. Brenna. Gotcha. Um, uh, you have two potions and your loyalty card. Anything else of import that you would like to do in your three weeks? No, and other than that, it's just like, that worked. Hmm. So Rain would just like be walking around town, just kind of like staring at people and getting that insight people think gotcha. about this and, and and seeing how that develops seeing yep. people's emotions rise seeing how they're used how they're deployed and how she could maybe use them to her own advantage maybe also seeing like the difference in what they're doing at the moment and what's actually on their mind how that sometimes is also a bit of a disconnect um all right so the three of you do go about your business for three weeks and it's easy to spend a lot of time in Sharn and forgetting how much time has passed already. The city is vibrant and alive and there's always something happening. And in between these little vignettes that all of you have described, I'm assuming there's little things happening here and there. You witness interesting things. Rebus, as you travel back to Sharn, you witness some fairly impressive trade caravans that also travel to the city. Um, you also see occasionally a skyship soaring through the sky towards Sharn and coming from Sharn. 
Um, Delphine, you, with your regular visits to the Lirander Tower to see if there's any tasks for you, you see the most people from far-flung places coming to Sharn and leaving Sharn on the airships. You see many different members of your house. Um, and Rain, as you also wander the streets and sometimes just skim on the surface of someone's cerebellum, their most surface thoughts, you acquire insights into their lives, their emotions. But eventually, duty calls. And you're not entirely sure how Guild Handler Lara does it. And maybe you don't want to know, but she does make sure that all of you receive a letter from her and the Clifftop Adventurers Guild. Delivered to you, sealed with her own personal seal, and with an order to see her as soon as possible at the Clifftop Adventurers Guild. Where? We find the three of you on the second day of the month of Travago. Outside, it is raining. You can hear heavy drops of water tick against the glass of the windows of Guild Handler Lara's private chambers. And outside on your way here, you already felt how the wind is howling and how wet and cold it is, even for this spring time of year. But in here, is warm. The fire is on in the hearth. And coming from these little boxes, little cubes that are on the shelves in between these knickknacks and collectibles that Lara has here, some of them play this very gentle harp music that just fills the air around you and mingles with the cracking of the firewood. Gilhand Lara is standing next to the hearth. She has one of her clawed, in one of her clawed hands, she holds a glass of wine, which is just moving around in the glass. And she looks over at the three of you who have arrived here. Yes. She has a clawed hand, like just claws. She has, she's, she has, she has these, her nails are fairly long and sharp. She's okay. a, she's a shifter. She has partially oh. animal traits and her claws are these elongated, darker nails. Um, and also some of her eyes also a little bit, uh, have some sharper definition to it. You can see a little bit, they're most, you would, if you would compare them to something, they remind you, some of her features remind you a bit of a snow fox, these uh, little foxes that you can see in the Arctic. Um, but there's also, especially with her smirks and her eyes, there's a bit of cunning on her face there as well. She looks at the three of you. I'm glad you could all make it back here. I promised you another job and I was lining up something new and the stars have aligned. All the factors are in your favor and I have a task that's a little bit more than taking an elevator down into the basement of the city. Oh, but before we get talking, and she points over to a side table, not far from the hearth. And there's bottles of wine. There's some mugs with ale, water, whatever you would like. There's cheese and meats and even biscuits. She points over to it and invites you to take whatever you want. There's also chairs and seats for everyone in case any one of you would like to sit. How do you respond to her offer here? How hospitable. Uh, I will take some ale and probably some biscuits on the side and then sit down. Uh, Rain will help herself to some wine and some cheese. And she kind of lingers by the table, curious to see what uh, Rebus picks, if anything at all. Rebus will do, I, I just walk to a seat. I don't have the intention of drinking or eating right now. Okay. Come down and sit, sit, sit with the two of them. Have any of you 
ever been to the Grey Wall Mountains? Not that I can recall. I've never been to any sort of mountain at all. Not at all. Hmm. Beautiful area. Especially in the winter month, I would suggest to go there if you have the chance. Lovely to hike through the mountains. Your knees, knee deep in the snow, cold wind in your face. Alas, there is a, it isn't that safe anymore since the end of the war and since this fledgling nation of Droam is using the Grey Wall Mountains as its southern borders. What all of you, as she mentions Droam, what all of you would know, uh, either already longer ago or would have picked up in your three weeks of traveling in the city, is that uh, Droam is a nation that formed at the end of the last war. With the treaty at the end of the war, there were several nations were recognized as their own independent nations. Uh, Breland, the country that Sharn is in, for example, is its own independent nation, according to the Treaty of Thronehold. The nation of Droam also applied to be recognized as this independent nation. However, according uh, to the treaty, it was not recognized as such. Droam is led by and this makes us a bit more interesting for many people, is led by a coven of hags, the so-called Sorakel. This triumph, this trio of hags has united a number of different races in Droam and given them a place to settle there. Since the end of the war, Droam has not shown any kind of, has not shown any kind of aggressions to other nations. Um, but due to the fact that it's not recognized as its own independent nation, its existence as a state is a bit tenuous. And it has been trying to find its place in the world. Laura says, There's been rumors that Droam is intensifying their border patrols in the Grey Wall Mountains. There's a lot of tension between the nations. I don't have to tell you that. No one trusts each other here. And the other nations show little trust to a country that is unified under the hags of the Sorakel. But fortunately, as the Clifftop Adventurers Guild, we do not have to intervene in any kind of political matters. However, the Grey Wall Mountains, now being a possible hotbed for tension, are the place I would like the three of you to go. With the intention of? And at that point, as you ask that, she moves over to her desk takes a piece of parchment from it and unfolds the parchment on the table in front of you. And you do recognize that there is on it is a map of the Grey Wall Mountains. To put it in perspective, the Grey Wall Mountains are um, to the northwest of Sharn and are the border between Breland and Droam, which is on the other side of the mountains. And the map that you see is a fairly large map of the Grey Wall Mountains themselves. There's a lot of known passes and ways that you can take to cross the mountains. There's also like these color-coded uh, passes on there which indicate in which season you cannot use the pass. And you see a lot of them that during winter, they're like, they're red, which means that during winter you absolutely cannot cross them. While there's just a very few that are green, which mean that you can cross them all year over. But you also do notice that on this map, which is probably created by one of the cartographer guild, guilds in Sharn. 
someone scrawled with their own handwriting and their own uh, drawing skills some additional information on the map. In one isolated part of the Greywell Mountains, they drew in a valley, which according to the map should not be there. And they okay. drew in some possible, some dotted lines, which indicate tunnels that could go there. And then they labeled the valley, the Shining Valley. Guild handler Lara points to the Shining Valley on the map, ticks one of her claws on it. As the map says, our sponsor of this mission calls it the Shining Valley, an isolated area of the Greywell Mountains, which many have thought is pure myth and just hearsay. What makes this an interesting place is that according to, well, the myth, what we can find there is a manifest zone, a place where one of the moons, one of the planes unleashes its power. And this place is linked to the plane of Irian. At this point, I would like all of you to make an arcana check, please. Arcana check. Ooh. Remus, what do you got? Delphine had a four? 11. 11? Total of 22, 11. not 20. Not 22. <laughs> so, Remus and Delphine, um, you both know the word Irian. It is also the name of one of the moons that encircle the world of Eberron. And you do know that the moons are linked to certain other planes of existence. That's what people tell you. There are many expressions in the world that if you just don't feel well a certain day it's because that your matching moon is not corresponding with its astral alignments all that kind of stuff that's something and irian you know you have some vague collection that irian is used to describe positive energy or something to the likes rain you, as someone who comes from people that very much depend on tides, on the waters, you have a different connection also to the moons of Eberron, the various, the role they play also in the natural forces of the world. Also in the natural forces that shape and form undersea societies like those of the Tritons. Currents, uh, the way all the creatures that Tritons depend on. Some people maybe attribute them to the moon. So there's a, I, I exactly. totally see that connection. Exactly. Um, and you do know that Irian is linked to the plane of existence that is meant for positive energy and healing energy. Um, it is said that whenever Irian is the brightest gem in the sky and controls the waves and determines the tides, the tides are bountiful that fish flock to the light of Irian and um, following its light is a sure way to find bountiful fishing targets for your people. And you do also know that some of your healers in your home city um, do some of their most complicated healing procedures only when Irian is properly aligned with Eberron. Irian, you say? That's indeed an Irian. Uh, I'm, I'm not the type who pays much attention to the moons and the planes of existence, but I have been briefed that Irian is related to healing powers. So they say? Well, what I'm interested in is how it's linked to this. And she once again reaches over to a desk and she grabs a little wooden container, just the size of her fist. And she puts that container on the table, on top of the map, right where the Shining Valley is on the map. She opens it, 
and you see this brilliant sapphire gem in it. And as she opens the box, you can only, you already just looking at it, you feel, you feel in your gut this sense of relaxation. Lara says, our sponsor calls this the Sunrise Sapphire. It is a, an item that is linked to, I've been told, the plane of Irian and can be charged with its power. To be charged, however, it needs to be in a manifest zone of Irian. And that's, she moves over the item again to show the Shining Valley. That's where the Shining Valley comes in. I need a few brave people to go follow this map to the Shining Valley and charge the Sunrise Sapphire there. Then make your way out of there as careful as possible without causing any kind of border incident or be mistaken for any kind of forward patrol group or something. And just make your way back to Sharn. You seem to insinuate that perhaps some curious people such as ourselves would not be welcome in such a place. It's the border of Droam. And if the rumors are true that they're reinforcing their borders, that they get a little bit more on the offensive there, anyone who's not Droaman might cause any kind of aggression. Things could escalate. I'm looking out for you here. It's a dangerous place to go there. <laughs> How full of shit is she? <laughs> Make an insight check. Oh, well, that is Ask the telepathic character to do an insight check. <laughs> She's um well you she is she is deflecting. That's what you would gather. She's kind of deflecting things. Pardon my impulsiveness, Miss Lara, but if I may ask, what exactly is the purpose of the sapphire once charged? The sponsor of this mission did not wish to disclose of the purpose of the gem. And to be perfectly fair, the mission for us is clear. You need someone to go to the manifest zone, get it charged, and we are paid for that service. And what if this manifest zone is just a lie and in the end we can't charge the, the gem? Well, that would be a breach of contract with our client since he is very much convinced that this zone is there. And if I were to find out that I sent some of my people to a place that doesn't even exist, I would advise you to come here as back as quick as possible, and I shall have a conversation with the sponsor of this mission. Needless to say, if that would be the case, I would still look into, as far as possible, compensate you for any kind of expenses that were made on the trip. And I would not get you caught up in any other of the legal matters of that. How much is the compensation? That uh, is a question. I was expecting to be the first one, but this is also very soon already. Asking I'm very much aware that I'm very much aware that considering the current situation of the Greywall Mountains, there's already a bit of danger going on there. A part of the pay will be up front. Should you decide to sign up for this task? Each of you will receive 75 gold pieces up front already. Once you return with the fully charged Sunrise Sapphire, you shall receive another 175 gold pieces for a grand total of 250 gold pieces per person. And just to be clear, the priority is the recharging of the crystal, not an internation war, not, not avoiding one as such. 
I would very much be against that. Uh, if you have plausible deniability in any kind of events, well, I leave the resolution up to you, but the mission is to get the gem charged. I do want to point out a few other things about this mission. Oh dear. My sponsor, uh, my apologies, our sponsor, has informed me that the gem, this Sunrise Sapphire, needs to at least spend an entire day within the Shining Valley to recharge. So once you find the Shining Valley, get yourself comfortable there, make up camp, make a fire, sing some songs, enjoy your time there. And uh, hopefully it lives up to its shining name and it's a peaceful place. Also, I would of course not let you walk all the way to the Great Wall Mountains. And, and at that point she looks over at Delphine. I have been informed through some of my channels that in this party, there is a member of House Liranda who has some has some tasks to do to make amends for past deeds. And if this is the case, what would oh. you have been done? Oh, don't worry, I will not. I will not ask about whatever you have done. We all have our skeletons in our closets somewhere, but I have been informed after your, after your involvement in the events in the Cogs, I have been contacted by members of House Loranda and they did ask me to make sure that you are put on this job and in exchange made a most gracious offer. They would have one of their pilots and one of their airships fly you and your companions over to the Grey Wall Mountains. Now, tis not every day that the Clifftop Adventurers Guild is allowed use of a Lerander airship, so you can imagine my enthusiasm when I heard about this offer. Delphine is going to hear in her head, are you in danger? I'm not, definitely not. Share more about this later. Connection closed. <laughs> I have been. I love it. And she's basically forcing you to, to leave her on red or like just, you know, <laughs> flipping the, the, the flip phone, being like, <laughs> and I'm done with my conversation. <laughs> you, uh, Laura looks at you and says, of course, I have already agreed to that offer, and which does put me a little bit, it would be a little bit awkward if you were not to take this task then. But I have a feeling, considering that tis your family that is involved here, that you would have an inclination to do so, right? Oh yeah, of course. Really? It's my deepest wish to help my family um, do what they want me to do. Laura just Laura just smirks <laughs> at you. My family, <laughs> I was, you know, so loving. Re Rebus, you wanted to add something. Oh, I thought you were. No, okay. it's totally fine. Just get gotcha. Which is one of the things, and Lara like now paces through the room a bit with her glass of wine in hands. We do have an airship and a pilot, and I have been told that the pilot of this ship is the most dashing person. I've been told to stories about him, and I need to ask you to confirm these stories for me, but that's a different matter. Um, Nonsense. The most dashing person is clearly in here. Gesture to Delphine. <laughs> Lara nods. I certainly oh. can see that, but... You will affirm this. I first want all my information before, before I affirm this. I'd rather you not have that full experience. That was too special to me. Go ahead. Okay. Um, all right. Um, 
Now, the thing is, one of the problems of airships, as majestic as they are, is they can't really land where there is no proper docking tower. And the Greywall Mountains are fascinating, but they do not have a docking tower for an airship. So the airship can't actually get you on the ground in the Greywall Mountains, but I've already found a solution to that problem. Remember <laughs> our Sharn Chicken game? Naturally. So, so let me get this yes. clear. You want us to jump from the airship and land on the ground uh, with like falling slowly as possible. Under the cover of night. This is kind of I like a, a very bad novel. I'm sorry to interrupt, but according to my knowledge, winds in the high tops of the mountains might be very extreme, much more extreme than what we have experienced in Sean. Plus, at the cover of night, when not all of us will be able to see properly, it might be a bit too dangerous to simply hope for a good landing spot. Absolutely. The danger is much greater than here in the city. The sight, the line of sight will be limited. The weather could be against you. But there are a few factors that we can take into account here. I have been in exchange with House Loranda, and they have informed me that their pilot can make sure that they find the most ideal spot over which to drop you and that we can take weather into consideration. Um, of course, this task will be dangerous, but then again, you did play the Sharn Chicken game while also finding against rivals of the adventure of the Deathgate Adventurers Guild, and actually made it to the ground fairly unscathed. So, what is a little bit of cold mountain wind going to do against you? Well, I would argue it's a fairly different sporting event. And you see, Lara just takes a sip from a wine as she looks up, like, mm. <laughs> a slight difference, yes. Not my freaking problem. <laughs> yes. So, to Oops. summarize, to summarize, you will have an airship that takes you there. You jump off the airship. You need to use the map to find the Shimmering Veil. Uh, my apologies, the Shining Veil. My sponsor would be would like me to put out these names correctly. And charge the gem there and then make your way back. And you will also be given tools to then signal the airship ah. that will try to find a place. Well, that is indeed the challenge. I would have to figure out the details. If it can't land to drop you off, it can't land to pick you up. Hmm, Aww. that's gonna be that's gonna be a challenge, but we're gonna figure out those details with the pilot in House Lavanda. I'm sure of it. Any questions? Yes, Delphine. Um, I'm sorry. I, 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 uh, Lady I, I, Delphine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to go without of um <laughs> out of because we got the, the rate right now. Um, yeah, so um, I just want to say thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid, indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. welcome here. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Welcome, um, raiders. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, going back into uh, like, uh, so let's see. Um, you said we're getting the paid upfront, so that means this is basically the payment so that we get prepared for this mission. Oh, absolutely. You will get some yeah. time to prepare as well. And when we are starting or when we are supposed to start? She looks at her claws. There is a certain sense of urgency to this one. I'd <laughs> say you... House Lorenda and its pilot would be ready to depart in about two days. No. 
and we have full usage of the guilds mm, sundries to prepare for our trip, yes? If there is any kind of basic equipment you need, like warm clothing, climbing gear, um, I think it is called pitons or pythons. We have a bit of a debate in the guild on what you call them. And you, anything that you need for your venture, it is for you to use. You can just request it from our quartermasters and uh, we can fetch it for you. What is the name of the airship captain? Well, I wanted to give some kind of surprises in there, especially because I have to say, I am a bit interested in these, whatever is happening within your family there, Lady Delphine. But let me, let me take a little bit of the mystery away then. Uh, his name is Darian the Delizander. And Delphine, you would recognize the name of Darian de Lysander. Mm -hmm. You haven't met him in person yet, but he's the kind of Lysander that everyone wants their daughter to marry. He is, okay. he is considered to be not just handsome, charming, but is an extremely skilled airship pilot. And you have heard a lot about him rising within the ranks of House Lysander. And um, maybe the only thing that, only negative thing that you have heard about him is that the higher ups in the house would like to have him spend some more time in starting his family and his own branch of house Lysander, but he seems to occupy himself with um, his travels with his own airship, the clear blue sky, and enjoys that a lot. Oh, and he likes to collect fans, as in wind fans that you can... <laughs> This is a random fact that I know. <laughs> that is a random fact because there is, whenever someone sees Darian de Lysander, he always has a fan You're with You're going to bring him one. <laughs> uh, fun. Well. <laughs> so charming. Totally. <laughs> I, look, look. Uh, looking at Delphine's, like, I, I guess her face kind of goes into... Uh, how would you describe your face hearing the name uh, Darian Lysander? Um, Disgust, horror... Kind of sour. Sour. Uh, Rain is going to get up, hop onto uh, Laura's desk, and, like... Like, there's, like, like the width of a hair before her finger touches the gem. May I? As long as you handle it with care. You're going to touch it anyway, sooner or later. I'm going to pick it up. Any... Any tingle connection? As a sorcerer of your origin, Rain, Yes. You look at the gem and especially with you spending these past weeks skimming the surface thoughts of people around you, you look at the gem and it almost feels as if reflexively your mind opens to the gem. And for a very brief moment, you just hear a gentle voice in your head that says, breathe and then this connection fades again and you do notice that when you hold the hand there was like somewhere on your way here there was this ruffian who bumped into you while you were walking over here and you, they bumped into you and you got this little cut on your hand from it but as you hold the gem you see this cut just mending itself the voice was not my own. It was not your own, no. Foreign to me. 
it it was in the language of your home nation. Interesting. Uh, I'll say out loud, like, I need to spend a day in a place of tranquility. Have any other experiments been done with it? What if you should be subjected to negative, dark, swirling energies? Laura looks at you as you say these words, and she says, I do not know what our sponsor has done with this gem before. And quite frankly, if you're interested in experiments, or if they were ex interested in experiments, they would have brought it to Morgrave University here in the city and not to me. Fair enough. It se I, I seem to have some affinity with it. We seem to share some powers, some talents. But in my experience, these things tend to be two way. So, for example, if I, for myself, tend to receive some negative bad energies, I have ways of amplifying and sharing that, sometimes a bit beyond my own control. Just considering the potential hazards, if we get a bit too frustrated on this very dangerous and exciting trip you were sending us on. Maybe you should keep it in the box I will give you for it then. <laughs> she gives you the box. Didn't even have to use mind control for that. She, she just said that this a little bit taken aback by this uh, conversation. She says, am I to take then that you are in accordance with the terms of this task? I look at my two companions. It's okay for me. Are you sure of this, Delphine? You didn't seem very comfortable. I am sure we can find other tasks to perform. Um, let's say I'm not comfortable with this, but I have no other choice. can't say I fully understand, but I will support your decision and we will be near you. So we should be okay. And we shall. Now, if I may, Miss Lara, we would like the first payment so we may prepare for our mission. And she just nods, opens a drawer in her, uh, in her desk and each of you get a nice bundle with 75 gold pieces as upfront payments for the task. Ooh. Now, um, if you don't mind, um, Miss Rain, would you leave the Sunray Sapphire in my office until you come pick it up to leave the city? It would be, it would be rather problematic if in, during your preparation, something would happen to the sapphire. I'm going to take an uncomfortable long moment holding it, not responding, just staring at her, getting her to sweat. Uh, at, at the end of that, towards the end of that long moment of like, what the fuck is this woman doing? Subtle, subtle magic detect dots. As you do that, Delphine, is there something you want to do? Um, as I see, this takes more time than necessary. I will <laughs> just get up, put my, my hands on her shoulder and stand her, on her back and basically just whisper into her ear, like, please do how she says. And it's when you, when you start feel Delphine's hands on your shoulders, your detect thought spell projects into the surface thoughts of um, Lara. Mm -hmm. And you do this with subtle, subtle magic again, right? Yep. Gotcha. Um, did you already put the sapphire back into the box? Um, did I? I think I had in my hand something. You had Tell one. Me. You had in the hand, and she gave you the box as well. You know what? What's the juiciest option? Let me. 
<laughs> I don't know what happened. You can um, cause some trouble. Yeah, you know what? It's I think it, I think Rain would imagine that it causes more sweat for the gem to be in her hand. Gotcha. So she has the box, she has the hand with raising the gem. She's just kind of like playing this right. mind game. And you're literally playing a mind game as you cast detect thoughts at Lara and you scan the surface of her mind and the most surface thoughts you get from her in this moment is there is tension in her as she looks at you, but you also gather there is an image of what you assume is from Lara's view, Lara's point of view, as she's seated at a small table and across from her sitting half in the shadows is a figure leaning on a cane. You can only see the lower body, the hands leaning on the cane, but you can't see the upper body or the face. And as you see that, you see, you feel Delphine's hands on your shoulder and Delphine whispering into your ear. And are you still concentrating on the detect thought spell? I want to probe deeper. <sighs> and I, and uh, afterwards, I'm going to jump back into the safety of Delphine pulling me back. You want to, that means that Laura has to make a wisdom saving throw? DC 13. DC 13. Please don't know, please don't know, please don't know. Oh, actually, that's going to be funny either way. Yeah, because I'm just reading the spell. Yeah. Um... Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Let's go. There's consequences to this. Kitty cat. You, <laughs> as you feel the hands of Delphine on your shoulder and you hear a little bit further away from you, you hear Delphine's voice as if she's further away from you than she should be. You focus and you start going deeper into the mind of Lara. And you see that this image of her sitting across from this man leaning on a cane shifts, the shadows receding from the face and you see this older gentleman, human gentleman with white hair tucked back into a ponytail behind their ears. They're dressed in very fine clothing and they have this friendly older person smile on their face in one moment, but then the image shifts and their expression shifts to a more sinister expression as they look at Lara and um, you, you, deep, you dig in there and you hear, you hear a male voice saying, and thus I shall write it, my masterpiece. And with that, as you dig deeper, what the rest of you see at this point, what started off as this intense stare down between Rain and Lara and Delphine now standing behind Rain has drawn into this awkwardly long silence and at one point you see Lara reaches with a hand to her forehead. I will gasp now realizing Delphine is like very close to me. Oh, okay. And at that point, as you, <laughs> as she, as you lean, as you lean into, into Delphine and you reach, you give out the item, the, the sapphire, you see that with one large stride, um, Lara steps right in front of you takes the gem in the box, puts it aside, and then grabs you by the collar, pulls you in, and just says I with a bit of- I immediately, like, interpose myself between them. Like, at least my arm in between the two, kind of like, do not touch my friend. She has the she has her hands on the collar of Rain, but you're still with an arm in between there now. And she tries to look over your arm, Rebus, and at Rain, and you hear with a bit of a growl in the back of her throat, you hear Lara say, still with a smile on her face, there's a lot of stuff that you can pull at me, but don't go digging around in my head. Noted Are we clear on that, Miss Rain? Be careful of that crystal. But noted. Now, I'm going to go. 
She lowers. She loses the grip on your collar. Steps a little back. Making use of the wonderful you. sundries you have here. She dusts herself up, looks at you, Rebus, and just nods at you. Two days. And she then points towards the exit of the door. Finish back the wine, pocket some more cheese, and strut out. Is the rest of you following? Out mm -hmm. the wine. Right. After Delphine has gone out, I'll be the last one to leave. Close As the, the last one to leave. So last one to leave Rebus, you would also see that before you leave, you see Lara takes a seat behind her desk, looks again at the sapphire gem and then gently puts it back into the box as she has like this very deep frown on her face. Wait, so we left the sapphire there? Yes. Yeah, Rain handed it over to, to her. Okay. Okay. Right, because we need to get ready before. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. I will turn to to Rain. Miss Rain, are you okay? <sighs> what happened? I assumed you were using your telepathic powers as usual. What went wrong? So to say, I did not. Nonetheless, thank you for the support. I appreciate that. In return, I will give you and Delphine come closer if you will, please. I learned something interesting about our our guild handler and someone who was very much in the forefront of her thoughts. And I explained the um the older gentleman, white hair, kind face, but sinister maybe th rain caught a threatening sort of vibe which is interesting because guild handler laura presents herself with a lot of confidence like and shakes her if this scary person was in her mind rain would uh, conjecture to her party members that uh, this person is, sh is shaking her is this her sponsor is this does, someone we're going does to the meet? description like does the description ring a bell any in any of my memory banks reba's as Rain describes, the wait, to you. wait. <laughs> I did not expect you to get serious. Wait. <laughs> can you, can oh, you shit. give me an intelligence saving Sorry. throw, please? Oh. A save, a saving throw. An intelligence oh. saving throw, if you would be so kind. A thirteen. Not bad. Not bad at all. As the description, as Rain describes this man sitting there, you think and the magics that give you life and thought try to form an image in your mind's eye. And almost as if it's an, a memory that doesn't fully belong to you, you suddenly think you hear you hear a voice first, a voice that is humming, as if someone would be humming while they're doing the laundry or cleaning. But beyond that voice, you hear the sounds of hammers, of drills, of electricity crackling in the air. You hear footsteps approaching invisible there's no one else approaching you here but they, they ring in your mind ring within the metal gold and steel and glass of your form and then as you look around you're in a dark room again hammers steel electricity footsteps faster now approaching a humming continues And then you just hear there's a boy's voice that you hear that says, 
What do you mean I can't play with them? No, no. They have work to do. What do you mean they have work to do? They promised me. I said that. Silence. A sharp cutting sound. Something penetrates flesh, sharp steel. Crimson in front of your eyes. And then the memory ends as if you've just, as if the curtain was drawn on a theater piece that you just watched and it fully recedes from your mind, you're still next to your companions. And uh, looking at your companions, all of that must have happened just in flashes of a moment. The stage didn't even notice what was going on within your mind. Blah, 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 blah. I've essentially just suddenly drawn my blade from my back and I'm in a kind of like ready to defend myself position. I... I... I, 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 I apologize. Uh, I, you see, uh, somewhere down the hallway where you were huddling, you see there's these, there were these two other adventurers that were talking with each other. And as you drew your sword, Reapers, they briefly look at in the direction of the three of you. And as they notice that you return your sword, they just return to whatever conversation they were having and act as if they didn't notice. I apologize. I, there seems to be some malfunction with my memory processing center. Uh, haven't you been a way to get, uh, like, some maintenance? Oh, I did, actually. Um, I thought it was fixed. It seemed to be triggered by the description Rain was giving us. I... But among what flashes I saw, I did not see this any person resembling this individual. However, I'm afraid it might be linked somehow to something in my past. But I am not able to be certain about it. You see, it might just be a coincidence, it might just be a malfunction. After all, I am but a machine uh, with some defects. Feelings I'm sorry if I scared defects. you. It was not my intention. Rebus, feelings are not a defect. Well, I'm not sure if they're feelings, but... You, uh, you just very, expressed, very you expressed you. fear. I don't know what triggered it, though. Why would I be afraid? It's good that you just came back to your normal state. Because I'm... I'm sure you and your sword I mean, at this place, that wouldn't have been good. Maybe you should... No, certainly. I, I did not hurt any of you, did I? No, no, but, but, I, but I'm... I have the feeling that maybe you should look for someone else to look into that again, except of the person who you just visit. I might be that person. I'll... I'll... Put, sink my uh, put my arm around me, but it's like, come, we have much to discuss. I'm prepared. Come, 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 come. Oh, I, I did not know you had engineering uh, talents. Come, come, come. come. <laughs> and I will be dragged by rain. <laughs> She's like this much the height difference. She's did. <laughs> and as as little rain is dragging away tall Rebus you make your way down the hallway to start your preparations for your journey and that's where we're going to take a little break for now so we're going to take about a 10 minute break so we'll be back at 40 whatever hour it is wherever you are watching right now so in uh in 10 minutes take the time stretch drink eat whatever you want to do uh pet your pets and uh, we'll see you back in 10 minutes then be back soon. Bye. Don't go away. Bye. Yep.
we are back in here hello everyone i hope everyone got some drinks got some snacks you stretch thank you very much kelma for the reminder for us to stretch that is very important when you sit behind a desk and talk about visions a warforged has and probing other people's minds um be before we get back into the story just quickly pointing out if you like what you're seeing here and you would like to keep track of what we're doing you can follow us on our socials on twitter uh at horde underscore of underscore tales the twitter details are also down in the description uh you can also find our link to a discord there where you can also join us where our uh where izzy was already so fast to uh clip my cat remark from earlier in the stream <laughs> so if you want to look back at that moment you can find the clip already there um gold and gold we also we also do have a youtube channel there where since yesterday the first four episodes <laughs> of this campaign are uploaded in the youtube channel in a combined playlist and they're not just there in they also have timestamps. thank you very much for that ida for Yay! making those ready in there so if you want to that look back awesome. what happened Mm -hmm. what happened previously you can find them in our youtube channel and if you would be so kind to subscribe to us there as well we would really love that the timestamp um, descriptions are totally not snarky exactly they are, they are evenly snarky oh. my pc itself themselves. i need i need to check it out <laughs> now i need to check they, it out <laughs> they, they are fantastic um i love that also talking about says on the chat pss, 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 pss. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! I've been I've been called by people. Um, and, um, <laughs> if you um, uh, talking about subscribing and following, you can also subscribe and follow to us here on Twitch. If you have Amazon Prime and you have not used your free sub yet, you can also use it here if you want to. And we thank everyone who decided to follow, subscribe already during the stream or gift subscriptions to the stream. Thanks again for doing that so far. We really appreciate it, and we also appreciate everyone who's just here watching us doing this. Thank you very much. With that being said, let's go to some people we also appreciate, um, our adventurers. Um, do you? Do you really? I, <laughs> I do very much appreciate these characters. Um, we, you, we, before the break, we got all of you out of your meeting with Lara, which ended on a bit of a more dramatic note as Rain uh duck deeper into her thoughts and those thoughts then again triggered memories that rebus couldn't really place and you're signed up for a new mission for the cliffside adventurers guild for which you have two days to prepare now i don't want to get into all the minutiae of your preparations but you do have two days to prepare what would be the most important things you would like to do during your preparation before you take off on the airship Rain has raised her hand with the speed of light. Rain, um, what do you want? If, explain we're going to a um, mountain cold. Uh, Rain is just going to push past anyone in the area where all the clothes are. We're going to pick the nicest, cleanest clothes of all the bunch, making sure that they are sizes that match up. Even for Rebus, she didn't ask. She's just looking for rain size, nice clothes. Delphine size, nice clothes. Rebus size, nice clothes. And then after that, uh, she wants to have a bit of a chat with Remus. Can you put your mic a little bit further up? For the... Hi, can you hear me better? Yes, All yes right. that's better. So... You want you want to chat with Remus? Yes, after finding like all the best winter clothes to take for her, for Rain, for Delphine, and for Remus. She's just collecting it. She didn't ask whether it was needed. So you basically check. You with you're not even checking with the quartermaster or anything. You're just collecting them, like mm -hmm. finding the best and finest. And all of these winter clothing, while they certainly are warm, the material is so terribly coarse. And some of them have these infuriating patterns on them. Whoever thought that it was a good idea to line the edges of the clothing with just these infuriating cubicle patterns. But you look around, you try to find better, but apparently no one in this adventurous guild decided to make both extremely comfortable and infallibly good-looking winter clothing, but it's the best you can find. 
with whatever uh, pittance, extra rope, the, the, uh, uh, three sets of mountaineering kits. Excellent. Which you, which can be provided if you're while you're digging through them. There's actually this, um, there's this one uh, halfling who for a while like sees you in one of the rooms digging through stuff, and then the halfling goes, uh, "If you're looking for the pittance, they're up on that shelf with the other mountaineering kits." Get them for me, please, darling. I was actually on my way to another... Th Repeat in their mind. Pretty please. Oh, that's a interesting trick, but I do actually have to... Do you just stare at them? Can you give me an intimidation check, please? <laughs> oh, you don't want to... You don't want to make rain Total mad. 20. 20? Oh. No, 21. Like, you, no. you, you turn to him and you see him standing there. And this is actually this halfling who's standing there. He still has, like, a sandwich in his hand, which he's already b taking a bite out of. And he's just pointing down the hallway while he's saying, like, I actually have this thing. And then you just glare at him. And he's like... Well, come to think of it, that's not so important. And he gets into the room, helps you get everything down. I'll hold that sandwich for you. Oh, that's awfully nice. And um, <laughs> you, uh, he gets the stuff for you. Well, that's not so nice. And he puts the things out there for you and gets it already and hopes to get his sandwich back at one point. With that being said, you are able to... to go. Find the... <laughs> every interaction with rain every time it just kills me man <laughs> you you find the warm clothing and the mountaineering stuff and the pittance though some would say pythons but that's neither here nor there and um uh, you would like to check with rebus then right yes okay, so you see Since this, this uh, she did mountain. take rebus out of the yeah, I did drag Rebus, and then I, I ran somewhere else. So it's this very <laughs> flighty kind of mind. But Rebus, you you see this mound of clothing just kind of with two legs underneath it walk towards you. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Rain, I believe. Uh, let me help with that. And I will grab the clothes and actually, like, lift them. Ah. You'll get her. Kind indeed, yes. Thank you very much. One of those is for you. Oh. Thank you for picking them up. I'm not quite sure how my complexion will react to cold, but I'm sure this will help. What did you want to talk about? Should we find a place to um, sit comfortably? That may be a better idea, yes. Uh, couches or wherever we can sit. If there's you do find place. there are these, there is, there are next to like the the eating hall and the diner hall of the guild there's also like smaller lounge places throughout the building so you can find a place where you can sit down and talk in private more or less if if there are private thoughts i'm just going to now if i pay for me to not to learn from from experiences may i Certainly. Yes. If and Rebus will hear telepathically. Would you be comfortable trying to remember what it has made you so scared again? But let me guide you through it. I may be able to unlock something deeper, but I will need your Willing cooperation. That is actually not a bad idea, since I have had every part of me looked at by an experienced engineer, but not by a technician of the mind. I feel like it's worth a try. I am not sure if I can recall the memories as they happen, but I can show you my recording of them, if that makes sense. All right. I don't think I can trigger the same reaction, but I can show you what I saw. Speaking of said reaction, um, 
should you have the um desire to draw your weapon again so long as i am able to enunciate speak so to say i should be able to perhaps temper that as well that might be very helpful thank you um Although I will point out that when it happened last time, it was in a defensive position. Like Rebus did not draw their weapon and like put it to attack you or um, Delphine. It was more of a ready to defend themselves kind of, you know, body language. But gotcha. it's still drawing a weapon like for no reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, you know what? I've seen people do this. I'm going to actually raise my hands to reap to the size of Rebus's head. And I am going to now activate detect thoughts. All right. And you are going to cast detect thoughts on Rebus. Yes. So I can be verbally directed at the target spell. creature, naturally shape the course of the thoughts. All right. So, Rebus, as Rain puts her hands on your head, you feel the touch of her hands. And you don't at this point feel anything else yet. You just see Rain also looking at you and you sense the presence of the telepathic connection that she established earlier, but you don't feel anything else as of yet. Rain, you, however, as you cast a spell, you already sense like surface thoughts. Rebus, what would you say are your most surface thoughts at the moment? Uh, I'm curious to see how cold will affect my form since we were just talking about that. I am worried about Delphine or Rain getting hurt. I am worried about like the the expedition itself. Like it's a bit not. It doesn't seem very well thought out uh, from Lara's part because we are the ones in danger and not her. So obviously, and I am somehow a bit worried to, about the sapphire and if it has anything to do with the other idol that we recovered for her. And if this might be a dangerous thing to successfully uh, complete. So overall, I would say the emotions are like worry and uh, concern. Um, yeah, and it's mostly about the mission and about us being safe doing the mission. Gotcha. And Rain would just not having asked anything, she says, so long as we're together, we'll be fine. But that man I described with the white ponytail, with the cane, with that smile that looks as in the picture him. Where I picture whatever my whatever my head told me to picture, like the image of a man with a, you know, like, I don't know if it's the same, if it's the same one that Rain saw. That's the only on trigger Rain Lara's knows. mind, but yeah. Yeah. You I would guess see now she can if tell you, me if they coincide or not. If you, if you start asking the questions in that way, Rain, you would slowly indeed shift, notice a shift in the surface thoughts of Rebus. And I go deeper as I ask those questions, having already preemptively asked Rebus for cooperation on this. So, okay. So you want to probe deeper into the mind. Um, Rebus, you do notice at that point, as she's asked this question, you do notice that there's this presence that trying to go deeper into your mind. Do you allow it? Yeah. All right. And you do, you sense it sinking. It's a strange feeling because ask anyone to try to describe what it would feel like to have an invisible presence trying to dig around in your brain or whatever a Warforged has as a substitute for a brain. And you would get a myriad of different descriptions on how that would feel. 
And there is, however, you notice that there's a no different mind in your mind at this point, trying to probe deeper and grab deeper. And as Rain asks this question about the man, the old man with the ponytail and the white hair, Rebus, you notice that there is a void, a blank. And Rain, you also, as you reach in with the detect thoughts, you reach into nothing. I think Rain would find that like scary. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is, it, it's as if you, you there was a blanket over something. And with your first layer of detect thoughts, you look at the surface of the blanket, you touch the surface of, and you feel there should be volume underneath the blanket. But as you pull away the blanket, there's suddenly nothing under it. Why did you reach for your weapon? I was scared that someone was going to attack me. Or someone else. No reaction in the thoughts I'm reading as Rebus counts this back. Rebus, you do, as you also rethink those thoughts, you do notice that there's in the void, in this darkness, in your memories, there's this very vague shape taking form. It's almost like a gaseous entity, just a shadow of a memory that as Rain is asking these probing questions, it's slowly coalescing into shape, but it's still not possible to say what it exactly is. Because the spell lasts a minute, my, just, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, my engineer described it as missing a piece and I feel like this is the equivalent. This shadow, this shape, try to hold on to it. Perhaps it is a pathway for later. And Rain also takes stock of this uh, vague shape and shadow as he starts pulling back as the spell starts to end. <laughs> Rain, you pull back towards the end of your spell, noticing also that this connection is straining you. You're basically projecting your mind into another mind while also keeping your mind in your head. And that is taxing on your magic. And you start feeling like this, this sting in the side of your head as if there's a migraine slowly coming on as the spell ends. And as you pull back out of the mind, back out of these deeper layers, as you pull back, Rain, you can still see that what Rebus now also still sees. You see the outlines of this gaseous shape, this vague memory, become a little bit more defined, more solidified. And it's at this point only this humanoid silhouette, a shadow figure, is just standing there in the void. And to you, Rebus, it feels as if there's another passenger inside of you at this point staring at the void of your thoughts where memories should be, but they are not there. And Rain, you recede. And as Rain recedes from that part of the emptiness, Rebus, you also feel that nothingness fade back into you, back into your regular thoughts. Are you well? I believe so. That was most enlightening. Are you okay? There's one thing I will admit. Voids. While they present themselves as emptiness, voids are also emblematic of high density, pressure, darkness, fathomless. They're anything but empty. There's one thing that... There's not much that keeps me up at night, so to say, but... 
we're together here. It'll be fine. I certainly hope so, Miss Wright. I would love to know more about this seemingly missing part of myself, but my main concern right now is for you and Miss Delphine to be all right and to complete our task. Yes, yes. I'll pick up Delphine's bundle. We must bring this to her. Delphine! <laughs> Delphine has has okay. stormed out of the of the adventurer's guild. <laughs> where 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 did you where did you head to Delphine? <laughs> um first basically just wandering around the city cooling off her the head because of like most of the stuff that happened there and like as a mental preparation of what might come next. And then I'm going into a um what what is this called? Uh, antiquary or something? Antiquary. An apothecary? No 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 no. Um Tell me. Uh, for for Marcus, this might a bit easier an antiquariat. Oh, and uh, and antiquary, an antiquary, yeah, an antiquary. Yeah, yes. antiquary. Yes. Yes. yeah, a place that as place that sells old stuff. Ah, old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Antique yeah. shop. Thank you. Yeah, um, and then since I know we who we are going to fit, I'm looking for a very old and fancy and unique fan. <laughs> A very old and fancy and unique fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you come across indeed an antique shop. Um, there, there's multiple shops that you wonder by that claim to be antique shops, but uh, they are they are hardly antique shops. Many of them are aren't even selling really old stuff or anything that has a that has a legacy to it and that has some history to it. Um, but eventually, after you wonder, which might even help you cool off a little bit about this, whatever it is that stings you about the fact that your family got involved in this way, you find a shop, a most cute shop, a small small shop with hardly space to maneuver in the shop. There's like shelves next to shelves filled with old stuff. There's these little, there's these porcelain dolls in these dresses and everything that look at you with porcelain eyes. There's these large grandfather clocks and you can hear the echo of the, um, of the swing in there, like pendulum. Tonk, the pendulum, thank you. The pendulum, you can hear it echoing through the shop. Um, there's also, you see, there's this very little, um, this really little, uh, toy, um, lightning rail set, which is like a little train. Uh, and you recall that back when you were young, some of your, uh, some of your cousins, they had this kind of, these kind of lightning rail toys. Uh, is it an so electric? <laughs> 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 and, uh, you do eventually, as you go into the, as you look around the shop and you don't really see the fans immediately, um, you see uh, coming from behind one shelf, there's a, um, uh, let's make her, let's make her a fellow half elf, a, uh, a woman already strands of gray in her hair uh, very neat looking outfit and she looks at you has these little glasses on the tip of her nose she looks at you oh welcome there uh, anything specific you're looking for fans fans oh well that is not a request we do seem often they seem to have gone rather out of fashion but I hear that they're coming back into fashion. <laughs> and, and then she looks at you at your fancy outfit and everything. Is it for you? Should it match your attire? No, this is kind of uh, meant as a present. For, for yeah, someone who, who likes them. Oh, I 
I see, I see, I see. Fans, fans, fans. And she she gets just you to follow her and she takes you to a mm. little part in the back of the shop. And she shows you, at first she shows you this fan that seems to be made out of some kind of steel. And as it opens, you hear this shing sound. And um, there's uh, carved into the steel are these um, kind of circular patterns or spiraling patterns. And the steel is very polished. It looks very nice, but it still looks very much like a sheet of steel that someone has carved something into. Might not be very fancy. That's, that's one of the fans I have. Um, it, this is said to have actually been crafted as a prototype for a rather exotic weapon um, to be able to use this in case of emergency as a weapon should a social occasion turn violent. Now, I do not know much about, um, about the lives of the high society, but I have not heard of many social occasions that turn violent enough to resort to a fan as a weapon. This is very interesting, but might not be the thing that I'm looking for. Oh. However, I'm pretty tempted to just get it, uh, just in case. But uh, no, 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 no. Oh, is it something more, something more elegant you might be looking for? <laughs> Something old, kind of unique, kind oh. something that you would not come across that, that often, I guess. Yes, 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 yes. Wait, wait, wait here a moment. I need to go check in the back. One moment. And she disappears in a room adjacent to your room, and you hear some rummaging, some boxes being shifted around. You hear you hear a quick like ow as something drops. And she shouts like, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'll be right back. And she then eventually comes with out with a box and she opens the box and takes out a fan made out of beautiful silk. And there are woven into the silk are these very fine strands of gold and silver that shimmer in the light of the shop. And actually in this kind of aquarelle kind of colors painted onto the silk is a very creative interpretation of a map of the continent of Corvair, the continent that you are on. It's, it's not geographically correct, um, but it's a more colorful and very creative interpretation of the continent. And again, these strands of gold and silver woven into the fan, which gives it a bit of a shimmer. It's like one of those medieval maps that like mm -hmm. you find in illustrations that is obviously not like really 100% accurate, yeah. but like they're very pretty. So there's, mm -hmm. there's absolutely somewhere out there, there's like a little note painted on it that says, here be dragons or something. That's exactly so. mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. Except this is D and D, so how much would you take for that one? Well, I do have to say it took me quite some while to acquire this. This was a few years ago, but. I was hoping it, I'm going to be very honest with you. I was hoping that it would leave the shop a bit sooner because I think it is rather pretty, is it not? <laughs> Looking at it, just shocking, like, yeah. <laughs> ah, well, the thing is, apparently there is not much many people who are interested in fans these days now that you don't need to wave your hand at your face. There's all these mage rites making their little gizmos to just blow a gust in your face. So maybe people lost a bit interest in these. I'd say the, craftsman, the craftsmanship alone, oh, we're easily talking about 20 gold pieces for this one. You said you were hoping that it'll leave earlier. Oh so... dear, I should have not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
Let's say, if I'm not taking this, I might, might lay here for a couple more years, probably. So, how about we're making this 16 and that's okay? Give me a persuasion check, Delphine. There's the cat when you need it. Cat. Yeah, I, I hear it. I hear the cat. Come on, come on. Okay. The, the cat has found a different lab. The traitor. <laughs> come on, Pally. Seven. The seven. <laughs> it's not so good. She looks at you and you get the feeling that she's not really charmed by your um, by your bit of your, your more rugged approach to this. She, she, she closes the fan and she looks at you and says 18 gold pieces. Hmm. 17 and I'm taking this 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 metal knife fan thingy she looks at the fan and you also as you pick it up you do notice as you carefully move your hands over the edges the edges of the fan are actually sharp so mm -hmm. you have to be very careful touch them <laughs> if you also want to have the Metal fan. 19 gold pieces for both of them. Okay. Fair. Ah. <laughs> I shall pack them up for you. It's for sure cursed. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I know she, that. She, um, she, make, she makes sure that she, she packs up both the metal fan and the silk fan for you. And uh, takes the coin and uh, thanks it. you for for your patronage. Cursing to myself by leaving the, the shop of like, if he's not thankful to, of this, <laughs> I'm just burning it. <laughs> as you mumble that to yourself as you leave the shop and uh, finish your business there. Now, is there anything else of import that you would like to do in preparations for your journey? Or can we move forward as two days pass in Sharn? For Rain, Rain is good to go. Mm -hmm. Delphine as well? Yeah, mm -hmm. Rebus as well. All right. So you take some, you make sure that you take stock if there's anything else that you might need in the coming days. You are provided with the necessary gear or well, Rain already claimed that gear and a friendly halfling helped her in getting that gear. Uh, Delphine, you have the fans on you that you acquired and it is after two days of preparations that you make your way to, after picking up the Sapphire at the Clifftop Adventurers Guild, <laughs> you, you indeed make your way to the Lerander Tower in Sharn. And Delphine, I would assume that you know your way to the Lorenda Tower, so your party does not need any guidance there. And where on your first mission, your elevator took you really down into the city. On this mission, a way more comfortable elevator is taking you upwards in the city. As the light around you does not grow dimmer, it becomes brighter. On the levels that you started, this day started with mist and a bit of fog hanging around. But as you ascend in the elevator, more and more of the sun peeks out. The colors that are used to paint the houses here are brighter, more vibrant. There's less damage and dirt in the streets here. The elevator does not rattle as you go up. It's smooth. And eventually, as you reach your highest stop the elevator stops gentle not abrupt no shaking and you peer out through the rails of the elevator door that moves open you can already see reaching for the sky the spire that is lorander tower an elegant construct that 
still blends in with the rest of the architecture around it, but it reaches up towards the sky and has at the top of it a large circular platform from which gangways reach out towards the docking stations of the airships. And as you arrive and make your way towards the tower, you can already see at one of these stations an elegantly curved, majestic and large airship hovering up there, kept aloft by the wonders of the magical technology powering it. It's made mostly from what we see of this dark, beautiful wood adorning its outside, rings of steel and extra plating reinforcing it, but also beautiful patterns carved into it to give it a, well, a more beautiful look. Paint used to add red and blue patterns on it. And there's actually a bit of a color gradient that from the front where the wood is dark, it goes into the back and the gradient transitions from dark wood into this darker blue, into light blue, like the azure sky above you. And you can actually see written in beautiful calligraphy on one side of the ship, it says clear blue sky on it. The three of you approach the tower as you make it when you see that. Is there anything you would like to do as you are on your last meters towards the tower? Is uh, Delphine's expression exuding joy and happiness or like, oh, God. It, it's more resignation, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just say that Rain takes stock of uh, Delphine's uh, emotional presentation. Very long rested, yes. Okay, spells back. Okay. You um. You approach the you you approach the tower then, and as you come close, you see already at the entrance the there's this entrance at the foot of the tower that is flanked by a few soldiers and um. Uh, staff members of the house staff and the house staff is dr dressed in practical yet beautiful clothing and they do have on the chest the kraken symbol of house loranda in a blue color and you can actually see this kind of outline of a kraken reaching out with its tentacles as a house emblem and uh as they approach as you approach the house staff one of both of them curtsy in front of Delphine, do a bit of a bow. And one of them says, Lady Delphine, we hear that you are here on house business today. Yeah, can we get over this pretty fast, please? Thanks. And from behind the house staff, one of the guards who is like hidden underneath like a full face helmet, you can hear like this, uh, this chuckle from underneath the helmet. But the house staff is just going like, <clears throat> Yes, of course, Lady Delphine. Lord Darien is awaiting you aboard his vessel. Do we have the honor to escort you and your entourage aboard the ship? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tis an honor. Please follow us. And the guards... <laughs> open the door as you follow the house staff inside and inside the tower you see that on the ground level um, leading away from the grand entrance hall are a few other hallways which look like they lead into storage rooms as you do know that the Liranda tower as an airship docking station is both a point where people arrive and you see there's hustle and bustle here on the ground floor people that just arrived here in um in charn but um Airships are also used to ship cargo through the air. So there's also places where some of this cargo is momentarily stored before it is gets spread throughout the city or is maybe put onto the lightning rail or other airships. But you pass by a bunch of different people that are here at the Lerander Tower. You see other people in Lerander uniforms, but you also see Nobles dressed in fancy clothing. You see probably dignitaries from other nations that have arrived here. You hear laughter, you hear frustration, you hear someone at one of the desks that is in this room 
you hear some shouting like, but the immigration papers are complete. And then you hear the other the person on the other side of the desk say, sir, as I've mentioned you, you have to hand them in in threefold. And at, at that point, the conversation trails off as you move by. And you come again to another elevator, which the house staff tells you that it will lead you up to the platform where Lord Darien is already awaiting you. And uh, they usher you into the elevator as they make sure that you are the only ones aboard this elevator as they just enter, as there's a few other people that try to enter. And one of the house staff goes like, apologies, but this lift is now reserved for official house business. Please wait for the next ride. And the house staff just gently pushes the people aside <laughs> as they make way for you. Um, <laughs> and, and you get boarded into the elevator. It's door closes again and it slowly ascends upwards. And one of the house staff, then once you're moving up, one of them turns to you, Delphine, and says, it must be an honor to travel with Lord Darien. Ah, we already also, he already had a brief conversation with us. He's such a kind man. And you're going on a daring journey to the mountains, we heard. Ah, so brave to travel with Lord Darien. Oh yeah, he is such a fascinating person. It's such an honor to travel with him. <laughs> the house staff like just politely smile at you and nod. They are aware of your tone, but they decide to not <laughs> indulge you at this point. Um, but it takes a little bit until you're up to the top of the platform. Is there anything you would like to discuss before you're up on the platform? <laughs> Uh, has it been made clear how long the airship ride is going to take? Um, I would say that in the two days, um, if any of you would have broached that question, um, you would have heard that one of the great advantages is that with the speed of an airship, um, this pretty vast distance to the Greywall Mountains can be done in about 26 hours of travel. So a bit more than a day. And the advantage of an airship is it can just keep on flying as long as there's crew making sure it keeps flying. So you can basically keep traveling nonstop for these 26 hours. And so a bit more than a day of travel on this airship. Okay, gotcha. So also at this point, time of day, your departure will also be timed so that if you arrive at the Greywell Mountains, you will arrive in at night. So as planned, you can do the drop off mm. during the night. To the attendant. Sure. Is it common knowledge where we will be heading with this pilot of yours? Oh, no, good miss, tis not. But Lord Darien did indulge us with a little bit of just telling us that he was going on a voyage towards the Greywall Mountains. He did not give us any specifics and we would never ever ask for any of the specifics. We know our place, of course. What is your place, pray tell? <laughs> we are members of the house staff of House Lirenda. We make sure that any members of House Lirenda who have official business within Sharn and the lands around it are provided for, are aided, and- I look at Delphine as this person <laughs> barks down their like uh, polite uh, uh, cue card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will be, I will sure to tell Lord Darren what a good little job you're doing. <laughs> and with that, the elevator arrives at the top and you now feel the wind from the platforms, platforms sweeping into the elevator as the doors open. Would any of you describe your characters as being, any of your characters as having some kind of fear of heights? Not that, I mean, you've now spent more than three weeks already in Sharn and the place would pretty much have its ways to knock a fear of heights out of you, but would there be any character that would describe themselves as feeling like uncomfortable at heights? I think in Rain's case it would be only for the sheer newness of this experience. Like uh, playing the Sharn chicken was already pretty new, but uh, mm -hmm. she was also in a position of uh, wanting to show off. Yeah. Here, if, if you're telling this height is even higher than that, uh, Rain would take a, couple, a, a second to compose herself. Like, oh, oh. 
yeah, I might die here if I fell. Be because what's interesting at this site is that you are now so high that you're at this point, you're fairly high up in Sharn, but with the tower reaching out of that upper section, you can actually view over most of Sharn at this point as you step out on the platforms. That is high. I assume we picked up some stones for our feather fall, since the that token. was the plan, or something similar. You were informed that Lord Darien will provide you with whatever is necessary. Okay. okay. Yeah. And as you step out on the platform, you can see ahead of you now, you can see the clear blue sky up close as it hovers in the air and striding towards you is Lord Darien de Lysander, a tall, slender half-elf man who is dressed at least equally as colorful and pompous as Delphine is dressed. He has, he keeps his hair, which has a purple tone to it in a nicely, in a nice braid that goes down the back. And he has matching purple eyes and a friendly smile on his face as he approaches. His waist, around his waist is this silk sash that is dyed in many colors, rainbow-like. And over his fancy outfits, he has a very thick coat made out of the fur of a some large white-furred creature. But the, end, the edges of the fur are dyed in a kind of violet tone. So the white goes into these violet colors. And as he approaches, you can hear the dangling dingle dangle of dangling from his sash. There is also a belt from which a rapier dangles and clanks. And you also notice he does keep um, his left, um, the left, arm of his jacket is slightly shorter than the right so that you can see his dragon mark which stretches from his left hand over its lower over its forearm of his left arm and it's this in most places dark spiraling pattern that is underneath his skin S forms of whirlwinds and almost wave like that are that looked like some large tattoo on his hand and forearm. And with his right hand, he's holding a fan that is waving in his face. Then as he approaches, stands before all of you, puts the fan briefly in front of his face, just looks over the edges at the three of you. And then... You, eclectic man. <laughs> I, we are looking for a Darian... He steps close to you, Rain. He I love Rain. Has on his belt, he has a, a sheath for his fan, which he sheathes his fan into. And then he looks, he steps really close to you and looks at you with these purple eyes and then gently takes a hand. May I, miss? What is he, an anime character with the flies? <laughs> uh, telepathy. Make it worthwhile. And he smiles and he takes your hand and just carefully takes it and leans forward to give a gentle kiss on it and then responds through the connection, if it's still up. Yeah. I hope that was the case, as he just smiles. I've had better. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just leans back and says out loud, I take it these are the adventurers the Clifftop Adventurers Guild could provide and was able to lend me. You are looking for Darian? Well, you have found him. Darian de Lysander, 
captain of the clear blue sky, pilot extraordinaire, and maybe even the greatest scion of House Lysander. But that's just what I hear in the banter between my mother and my aunts. And usually when I'm somewhere, I am the most radiant thing, but here I feel outshined. It has been a while since my eyes have looked at a triton from the seas. And behold, and he points at you, Rebus, a war forged of not the assembly lines of House Kenneth, but what it looks like. And he steps a bit closer to you and he just, he has these marveling expression on his face. What a masterpiece of creation. Do tell, what is your name, soldier? I am Rebus. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And he takes your hand with both hands the pleasure is all mine. I have fought alongside other Warforged, saw their bravery, but never have I seen a frame like yours. This is something that many craftsmen forget. Tis not just what tool you make, tis how you make it. Not that I would ever call a single Warforged a tool. Let it known that Darian de Lysander <laughs> does not call Warforged tools. I turn to Rain, just, you know, just to look, like my, my face doesn't express much, but like, <laughs> there's this slight glitch on my, on my eyes, <laughs> kind of like amused. <laughs> and then as you do that, he spins around to turn towards you, Delphine. And finally, Cousin Delphine. It has been a while, hasn't Cousin it? Delphine. Oh, I should we have met before. I must apologize if my memories of it are hazy, but I did hear about you, Lady Delphine. You have been up to quite some shenanigans during the war, have you not? Well, let's say there was a lot of talking about it. Talking? Would you say anything of it would be true? Depends. Do let it be let it be known. Darian de Lysander does enjoy a good rumor from time to time. I think we have more than enough time to if you're interested in any stories to talk about it. Oh, how I am interested in stories, dear cousin, of all of you. And I am also interested in having you all aboard on my ship. And he then looks over to the house staff. Thank you very much for bringing them here. Enjoy your day, ladies. And he smiles at the house staff and you see him like, <laughs> giggle as they walk away back to the elevator. <laughs> now. <laughs> Rebus, Rebus is just like, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing? Now, do I have the honor of bringing you aboard my vessel? Sure. Yes, otherwise, there's not much we can do about our current mission. Much appreciated. Such an astute observation, Rebus. Indeed, if we want to progress, we need to move forward. Follow me. Let if, it be Rebus, known. If, if Rebus Logic could roll their eyes. In this like... discussion. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say, Rain? Let it be known that Lord Darien adheres to norms of logic and walks down the gangway. <laughs> 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 you follow the presence and figure of Darian towards the ship and you do have any of you I, I would say Delphine have you you've been on an airship before have you mm -hmm. Rain would you say you've been on an airship before 
Probably not. All right. Rebus, as you get closer to the airship, you do I was going to say, moment. oh, I've definitely not been on an airship. I, I was born three months ago. We're fine. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, never look ends. At it. you look at it for a moment, maybe peaked for a moment by your earlier memory and also rains digging in your memories. You try to see if you have any memory of it, but no, you don't recall being on an airship before. And for those of you who haven't here before, one of the interesting things is you, you hardly notice here coming from the docking station, you hardly notice where the point is that you leave the platform and get on the airship. The airship is so nicely snuck up to the platform that you just stride atop of the airship and you're up on the upper decks where you already see members of the crew cleaning, preparing and also you see now and hear the humming of the massive elemental ring that surrounds the ship this one is in a bright blue color a magical energy that forms a circle around the entire ship and lets out this rum rum while it's now hovering here there's also other kinds of machines and devices attached to that ring which seem to lead further down in the deck below and towards the back of the ship, you see that built on top of it is what looks like the captain's quarters, which is in this case a fairly nicely sized apartment sized building on top of the ship. And almost all of the outside is glass, much of it very beautiful colored glass. And Darian leads you towards these captain quarters and with one quick move, opens the glass doors of it, and you see gold chandeliers dangling from the ceiling. There is a large table in the center of the captain's quarters. Chairs are neatly placed, and food and drinks is already served in here. And you see, actually, as he enters, Darian claps his hands. And in one corner, you see this quartet of musicians who grab their instruments and start playing string music uh, as you enter. Um, there's staff working here right to fill, <laughs> fill the glasses and everything. And Darian makes sure that he does not sit down before any of you sit at his table in, that he decked for you and he's just standing there turns towards you i'd like to say that the best conversations are had over food and drinks and as you mentioned before we have quite some time to spend so why not spend it by first having a bite and enjoy the view as we take off from sharn come sit Rain will uh, walk over to a chair and kind of go next to it, look around, start to sit, but gets distracted, looks around again, bends her knees a bit and bends them, <laughs> watching for cues of everyone else, whether they're continuing to sit or stand. Oh, before I forget, um... Oh. Oh, Darian, I've brought you a present. A pre you should not have. And I, it, it, I'm handing him a nice little pack, a package with the fan inside, the fancy one that I've got. And I present it to him. He, aware of customs and protocols around it, he first allows you to present you the present. He looks at it, smiles. Does a quick curtsy and then with both hands takes the presence and says in a very formal way, I thank you for this gift and present to our house, Lady Delphine. Can you imagine? Would you if mind you if were I already... like, oh, I already got this one? 
Oh gosh. <laughs> he 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 looks at you and then says, "Can I already open it?" As you wish. Oh, I love presents. And he <laughs> opens he opens the box and he sees the fan. <gasps> Lady Delphine. He takes out the fan. You shouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what he's immediately doing with it. Such craftsmanship. But is and it cursed? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the, the metal one, I think, was the one that had the weird thing on it. Yeah, probably. I mean, you know, both of those, like... The paint and the colors. Oh, and... This, it matches my coat. Oh, Lady Delphine, I am most humbled and honored. And I must say, whatever rumors our house spreads within it about you, they must be most untrue, for no one with such taste could be such a bad apple. I mean, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> and as he's like, again, models. What? He he marvels at the at the fan again. He or probably he he no longer cares about what he, what he just said. He marvels at the fan, and then he looks over at the musicians and he gestures to them, and they change their calm music to a more happy tune that reflects his happy um, happy stance right now. I do know what to say. Here I am being hired for a journey, and I thought I'd bring you adventurers, a member of the house among them here, and then I'm being presented this. Now we need to celebrate. Please sit, sit. Oh, sit, come. And he moves over to the table where he sees Rain still like not sitting down at this point. <laughs> um, looks he just looks at, at the you. table, pulls the chair. Oh, what's that on the table leaning over it? It's so interesting. You see, Dar Darian moves over to you, the chair where you're standing next to, and he's like, shall I? And he pulls your chair a little bit further, inviting you to sit on it. Uh, uh, Ray, Ray will just turn around, smile, and uh, sit on the edge of the, uh, the table. I do know that maybe in Triton society, there are specific customs where this is called for, but uh, we like to sit on the chairs. Oh, I'll pick up a fork. You mean this is not for combing my hair? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rain. Yeah. Can you give me a <laughs> give me give a me a Disney performance? Check? What are you gonna like... <laughs> give me give me a performance or persuasion check? Your choice. Persuasion. Okay, you rolled you rolled good, but then you rolled really bad. So <laughs> I tend to oh! I tend to very a bit con It is um, and not twenty total twenty five. <laughs> is there anything, Rebus? I didn't catch the last part. You turned towards Rain, a bit confused. I'm concerned for her mental state. Oh. Um. And you say that Rain, I was a twenty-five, right? Yeah. You see, there was this moment where Darian frowns, and he senses the mockery in your tone and the jest that you're pulling at him. And his purple eyes seem to turn darker for a moment as he just reaches out to take the fork from your hand, smiles. I see you are very aware of our surface dweller literature. Would you be so kind to humor me, Miss Rain? Oh, for you, anything. Oh. I'll hop off the uh, table, uh, smile at my uh, party members, and plunk. 
and he like Darian adjusts the chair at once you sit, so he moves it a little bit closer to the table. What does the rest of you do? I, I'm just sitting down. <laughs> I am also sitting down. Right, and as you all seated, um, Darian takes a seat at the head of the table. He took off his coat at this point, and you notice that underneath his fur coat, he has this sleeveless tunic on, still very beautiful in its craftsmanship. And you can see he has a fairly, fairly toned upper body from what you can see. And also his skin is clearly not sunburned, but tanned by the sun. It's a bit of a darker tone, um, which contrasts with his purple eyes and his purplish hair. And he sits down. Looks at all of you. Ah, uh, any moment now. And as he says that, from outside, you can hear the elemental ring humming faster. And then there's a very brief rocking sensation as you hear a... And all of you feel this brief moment of loss of gravity in your stomachs before it returns. And as you look through the glass all around you, you see that the ship is moving gently away from the tower. As that's happening, you see the uh, Darian ah, just takes his glass of wine, swirls it around a bit. I have been on so many voyages through the skies, have been to the edges of the continent. I have seen the jungles of Zendrik, the barren wastes of the demon wastes. And yet every time the clear blue sky leaves a docking tower, I still feel that excitement rushing through me. A new horizon to sail to. I believe that is called a change in gravity. <laughs> At, that it is. My that it be known. I raise my wine glass. He raises his own. Let it be known. Let it be known that Darian DeLisander welcomes the Clifftop Adventurers Guild, well, its representatives, on the clear blue sky on his voyage to the Grey Wall Mountains on a mission most exciting. Raises his glass. It is not. And then takes a sip. He puts it down. Now, Lara probably briefed you already on learning of the details. It's going to take about a day of travel to reach the Grey Wall Mountains. If I am to believe the weather mages of my house, the weather is favorable in the coming days. But just like fate, weather is a fickle mistress. Are there any unclarities or questions? that you seek answers to. I am in a most cheerful mood for I have just received such a great present. And he smirks at Delphine. Why the interest in our mission? First of all, because I was tasked, ordered by the house Loranda, they asked me to go on this mission and I have been to the Great Wall Mountains often. I know its jagged outline on the horizon. It's cold winds battering my skin, but I have never been there under these circumstances. Drawm gathering at its other end. Rumors of monstrous scouting parties in the mountains and then a bunch of adventurers seeking a valley that only exists on paper so far. It has all the makings of a grand adventure, and how could I reject playing a role in that? Tell me, why did they 
ask you to do this, as you are such a famous pilot. You must have quite a lot to do. Oh, of course I am. And it was hard to find a hole in my busy schedule and planning. You see, I had just returned from a scouting journey along the edges of the Mornlands. A clear blue sky just edging the darkness of the gloom that lies there. And I return to Sean and I hear that I should be tasked in bringing a bunch of adventurers to the Grey Wall Mountains. Now, of course, at first I rejected the idea, but when I heard about the stories, I was able to, well, even more willing to do this job. One might say, I kind of asked myself, I asked to do this, yes. <laughs> so you basically just took this as a change from all the normal missions that you need to do what is normal these days lady delphine oh, we live uh, we live in a time where these nations have risen up at the end of a most destructive of wars. I do not have to tell you about the bloody aspects of the war that we participated in. And now we, our houses, but also these would-be kings and queens and rulers, pick up the rubble and reshape the continent. Every little thing we do especially people of our station, Lady Delphine, has the weight of fate attached to it. Nothing that we do is normal. Well, the world is calming down since the war has ended. So it seems. Well, at least... For now, there is a tenuous peace between these unstable fragments. And I am then asked to bring you to a place where that tenuous peace might be threatened. Well, not if we do our job correctly. <laughs> and he turns towards you, Rebus. I do certainly hope so that you do that. For what I gather from the mission briefing, you will be in you will be brought to the depth, well, to the very heart of the Grey Wall Mountains. Very close to what some would consider enemy territory. Now, let it be known that Darian de Lysander does not consider Drawam his enemy, but there are many who consider them a threat powder keg, so to speak, and even a bunch of freelancers like you could be the spark to ignite that powder keg. We will put our utmost care to be inconspicuous in our journey. I'm convinced a figure like you, Rebus, can be very inconspicuous. And he smirks. I look towards Delphine, kind of like asking, like, is he making fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the end, it's good that you're just bringing us there and your involvement is not any kind of deeper into this. Ah, that is indeed true. It's still a daring task, is it not? Fly you over the mountains and then have you leap off the clear blue sky. Yes, very daring for you indeed. Oh, I'm not coming with you. 
I still no, no. stand. He again, like very briefly, <laughs> just is shooting daggers at you, Rain, like with his eyes, just very briefly projects some annoyance, but then smiles again. And he says, I have made sure that I have some high quality feather tokens for all of you, which will make sure that if you do activate them in time, we'll have you land very softly. And we do have, we do have some arcanists aboard with expertise in weather magics. We will try to make sure that the weather conditions are as favorable as possible when we arrive. And I am still thinking on once, once you are done with your mission, you do need to get back as well. Now I cannot land this ship. That is not possible. But I still think that there is a way where I can still play a part in your extraction. But I will figure it out. We have more than a day to travel there. And for the time, all the luxuries of the clear blue sky, well, surely not as luxurious as other places you might be used to, but the luxuries I do have to offer aboard my ship, they are all yours. Chambers have been prepared for you. You have free roaming of the entire ship. And if there's anything you would like to know about her, he just looks around the room, kind of admiring his ship. Don't hesitate to ask me. One of my favorite topics to talk about is this ship. Let it be known. You are most gracious. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Now, the journey is young. So let's dig in and enjoy the trip. And as the string quartet in the corner is changing the tunes again to a more quiet, more peaceful tone that's befitting dinner. Rain pulls out a piece of cheese from forgotten. her pocket and places it on the plate in front of her. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what the fuck? I swear, what is wrong with her? <laughs> There yeah. is at this point she's sh just trolling everyone. <laughs> there is a shiver of disgust going through Darian as he sees this, but he masks this by taking a sip of his wine as we see our vision retreat out the glass windows and doors as we take in the entire view of the ship that is now on its way out of Sharn, leaving behind the spires and lights of this majestic city and turning towards far in the distance, jagged gray and white mountain peaks where our chapter will continue next week as we end here for today. Kablooey. All right. <laughs> Kablooey. <laughs> Well, this man, yeah. <sighs> Are you okay? Did I push like you personally too hard? Like Marcus, not 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 the character? Because <laughs> I was just like, I, I'm I'm completely fine. I okay. Mean, there's, a, there's a reason why I play these um, uh, these very yeah. out there characters. You're supposed to you're supposed to play with them. So I, uh, I, I think in. If it wasn't for Delphine's discomfort and her making it clear beforehand that she's just mm. uncomfortable with the guy and the house and be involved, I think Rain would have actually tried to uh, kind of a uh, latch on or try to find more kinship with someone who's expressing their individuality in the face of like a structure. But because mm. uh, Delphine kind of made it known that I don't like this guy too much, so Rain is like, okay, let yeah. me at him. <laughs> if my crush doesn't like you, I don't like you either. <laughs> yeah, and no, I think we had some. I was kind of there was some. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was kind of imagining him like Howl from the Moving Castle, but then he was kind of a 
pretentious prick and like you know <laughs> yeah, he, has, he has the aesthetics of howl but not the personality of howl so <laughs> mm. true i uh i like also the interactions after the mind probing and the visions and then afterwards the conversations and delphine you also going for that gift for him which was an interesting thing to play in on the dynamic because i'm really trying to i'm as a as a player i'm still i'm find it interesting what delphine wants to say with a gift like that because there is certainly some tension but there's still the politeness of a gift of something to be brought there's a there's an interesting dynamic there that's uh that's great I like that kind of stuff. Maybe she'll sure. meddle fan to rain later. <laughs> Maybe but, but, but according to Serial, that's cursed. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. According to me, all of the items in that shop, like when the lady said, like, oh, I was expecting it to leave my shop sooner. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I keep can stay. selling them. <laughs> keep finding their way back. <laughs> Look, just because she had porcelain dolls doesn't mean the entire shop is haunted. So we agree to disagree. <laughs> Look, I love <laughs> I love antique shops, but like, man, <laughs> listen. <laughs> All right, so that was that was some um, good start to the new, to the new chapter today. We'll be back next week, but before we head out for today. Is there anything anyone would like to plug? Anything that you're up to in the coming week? Serio. Actually, um, let me look this up. But one of the projects I work on just got released. Um, I've been hired by Open Legend and Open Source RPG to make some illustrations for um, one of their modules that they were essentially like releasing mm -hmm. um here it is look it's my cover art uh am i allowed to post links in the chat sure yeah i just know i don't know if it would like block me or something you can find it here and i made a wraparound cover which is the first wraparound cover that i've ever gotten to do and it was very fun uh which is also a desktop like computer desktop thing if you buy the the pdf and I don't know if it will become a physical zine, but like it has an adventure. It's kind of like superhero themed. I also added some illustrations to the inside of the booklet, uh, along with another artist, uh, Talula Illustrations, who also I've worked with before and who has really cool art. Who made the the props and the you know different item illustrations. Um, and you know, since that came out, uh, check it out if you're interested. I assume you like board games and, and role-playing games if you're watching this so there you go not just not just is the art really cool but as someone who read a little bit into open legend before it's an interesting system to also into if you want to try something new on the ttrpg market yeah mm -hmm. definitely check it out and also you don't have to buy anything any way to to try it like you have the rules it's open yep. source so you you can just check it out and see if it's a system that suits your campaign so yeah, yeah. exactly Super cool. And enjoy some amazing art. Exactly. Looks amazing. Well done. Thank you. Anyone else out. got anything going on this week? Or any other announcement they'd like to share? Not at the moment. <laughs> I have a little something. Um, I've been uh, playing a bit with the ladies of D&D community, and they're actually hosting a month-long event called In December, where uh, ladies of D&D is highlighting a lot of indie TTRPG games, uh, their creators. Uh, there's going to be a month-long of uh, one-shots, mini campaigns. Yesterday, we had a panel with TTRPG uh, uh, indie creators as well that I moderated. It was a lot of fun. But uh, this coming Saturday and yeah, and on the 18th, we're going. To, I'm playing in a mini campaign uh, called 12 Occult Demons. It's kind of a open play testing, and uh, it's a it's kind of a horror noir. Face your inner fears, which are manifest in actual demons. When you succeed, your demon doesn't do as great. When your demon succeeds, you don't do as great. But your partners, and you have to work together as opposing sides, and it's a really fun dynamic. Um, 
the GM is great. The players are great. So uh, check us out. Uh, it'll be Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 o'clock Central European time. So that's GMT plus one at uh, the ladies of D&D &D on uh, Twitch and Twitter. See I, I have something. <laughs> Yay! Uh, actually, this this Friday, I'm invited to the designer dash uh, from D and D Beyond. Oh, uh, back. It got me scheduled. And it, not D and D Beyond uh, from the Ends Guild. Oh, okay. um, yeah, last week it didn't happen because something came in between. But uh, this week Friday, it's actually happening. <laughs> nice. So. And you're gonna be on the designer dash. You're gonna under limited time. You're going to be designing an encounter, right? Yeah, 15 minutes. So you get getting a challenge Wait. like yeah, place an encounter around what whatever, an uncag or something, and then you have 15 minutes to to design something. <laughs> cool. I, I sometimes need more than 15 minutes to open my monster manual, and Kara yeah. over here is going to in, design an entire encounter in 15 minutes. Oh, that's going to be great. Major props. Exactly. Super. And that's going to be. I'm assuming if you just if we follow you on your socials of uh, Metallic Classy, we can follow that as well. But that's going to be at what time on Friday exactly? Um, it should be in 8 p.m. Uh, Middle European time. Mm -hmm. So, so like this. GMT plus one. So that's yeah. 2 p.m. Yeah. Uh, Eastern time and GMT plus one uh, seven in the evening. Man, we're so good with time zones here. Yep. Cool. It's, it's, um... Is it GMT plus one just? Sorry, I, I, I meant I meant yeah. GMT. GMT. Yeah. Just, yes. yes. You're right. They are starting at um, eleven a.m. in Pacific time, so they are on the other side of the world. <laughs> I see. You'll be so, there. Yeah. Cool. I'll be for you. Super cool. Yeah. No, that's going to be great. So DMs are we just can... superheroes, man. Like I, I could never, I come up with with the encounters and the things and like prepare i just cannot my brain cannot so do that hard as a beginner <laughs> <laughs> so we got we can yeah so if you like what we're doing here you can check out serial's art for open legend you can see ida later on in the indie december on the channels of ladies of D, &D. and carol will be on the dm skilled the designer dash which sounds extremely exciting I don't have anything else special planned this week. I'm just going to prepare next week's session because I have a bunch of people to send into dangerous mountains and throw them off of an airship to see how that ends. But you can Great. see how that you can see how that With turns out <laughs> <laughs> next week on this channel again, same time. If you liked what you do, what you saw here, feel free to follow us on the socials, join our Discord, follow us, subscribe, check out our YouTube, send us letters, uh, whatever you want. And we hope to see you back next week again. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your evening. Take care. And see you next week. Till next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.